Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in the previous meeting, we talked about the income and capital gains. Um, and we differ between monetary units and percentage. Uh, when we talk about monetary, monetary units, uh, it's, we talk about the dollar return. Dollar return. And if we talk about percentage return, we talk about percentage. And uh, just to remind you with the, with the main formula of the monetary return, so if we talk about the return, so the return is equal, as, as we said, income, plus the capital gains. So now, the income <coughs> is the, the current income. The current income is coming from, uh, for instance, the interest rates of the bonds, or the dividends mm. uh, of the stocks, or the rent of the building, or as we talk about the, the eggs, when you are selling the eggs to the, uh, to, to the shop. So this is the, the income. And this plus the capital gains. The capital gains is P1 minus B0. Minus B0. B1 is the selling price of the assets, and B0 is the buying price of the assets. So this is the return into dollar. If you want to calculate the return as a percentage return, so the, the return as a percentage is equal the income divided by B0 plus B1 minus B0 divided by B0. The question is, what is the importance of a monetary units and percentage units? Or, in other ways, which do you think is more important? The monetary units or the percentage? Which you prefer and why? This question to you, not to me. Which is more perceivable to you? To have a dollar return or a percentage return? Mm. Yes, a percentage return. Why percentage return? It's fine. You have accurate answer. Why a percentage return? Okay. A percent, yes, it is a percentage return. Why it is more efficient or more important than the dollar return? It, mm. it simplifi simplifies for us uh, to compare bet uh, between other returns for other people. Yes, this is the first thing. Is, uh, you easily compare between two different uh, uh, investments. Dollar return may be misleading according to the size of the firm. Yeah, it's misleading. Uh, yes, it, it is misleading because if we have two different size, size of investments. Uh, so it's hardly to uh, differ between them if we are using the dollar return. Yes. Okay, but there is some econometric things behind the using monetary and uh, a percentage. Just make your minds up. The, uh, the thing is <coughs> the monetary return is not linking the return with the cost, but the percentage return is directly linked your return to the cost. For look at here, we just consider the return, but in this formula, we consider both the return and the cost. So, in other words, how much it co how, how return I can make if I build this cost. If I hold this cost, which is B nodes, how much return I will relative to my cost. In other words, when you are saying here, we have 9%, it means if I invest $1, which is cost, it's investments, it generates 9%. So $100 generate $9 as, as a return. So it's easily compared between what you invest and what is the, uh, the return. And if you compare between two different style of investments, let's take this example, just to perceive the difference. 
if we have two investments, investment A and investment B. We bought investment A, $500. And we bought investment B, $5,000. OK? So we have different size. This investment, $5,000, which is larger than the investment of $500. Now, let's say we want to sell this business just to simplify things. We don't need to take the, uh, the income. Uh, the price of this is increased by $50. So we have $550. And this one is increased by $50 as well. So we have $5,050. Now, let us to calculate the percentage return or the, let's return as a dollar or return as a percentage. So, the, for the first one, we have $50. For the second one, we have 50 So, we cannot differ between the two different assets. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the calculate the percentage return. In the percentage return, you just divided 50 by 500 and 50 by 5,000. Because when you make the $50, you paid 5,000 as an investment. Yeah. And you make, when you make $50 in A, you only paid $500. Yes. So in this case, here you have 10%, 50 divided by, and here is 1%. So it's totally different. However, we end up with the similar do dollar return. So this is why, why the importance of a percentage, because percentage is offset the impact of the firm size. Okay? Any question? Uh, in the reflection to the financial markets, <coughs> some, some people uh, invest in the uh, small stocks. Because it generated more percentage return or generated more percentage loss. So be careful. When we are talking about percentage return, we talk about the percentage loss. Okay, let's talk about the risk. Any question related to the. Uh -huh. So, what is risk? And what is speculation? Is there any difference between risk and speculation? Mm -hmm. uh, risk is the possibility of loss, the uncertainty of future returns. Is but okay. Is the possibility of having loss? Yeah, but uh, the speculation uh, is an investment that offers a potentially large return, but is also very risky. Mm. Okay. Um, any comments? Uh, some people think that the risk is a, is a speculation. People think uh, a speculation and gambling is a risk. Yes, it is a risk. But uh, there is a difference between them uh, from the investment literature. So the lay person, uh, they uh, don't differ between the risk and the speculation, as well as the gambling. They think risk is, a, is speculation, and vice versa, speculation is a risk. But here is, there is a big difference between what is risk and what is a speculation. As she said, risk is a risk, which classified into systematic risk and unsystematic risk. But a speculation is the risk that you hold to get a particular return. So it's different. Mm -hmm. 
in other words, the speculation of is having a larger return. But because you want a larger return, you have to be at risk. So it's, there is a linkage. The speculation is linking between risk and return. But the risk is a risk. It's not, there is no linkage between the risk and return if we define risk as a risk. But in a speculation, is rationally linking risk and, re and, and return. This is why we say it's speculation. And some people, they don't really uh, have a clear understanding for speculation. For instance, in Arabic word, we see muqamara, muqamara. What it means, muqamara, is it's risk, khatar. So it's, there is no linkage. When I said khatar, it is no linkage between risk and return. But from the investment point of view, it is rationally linking if we are using the speculation, rational linking the risk with the return, uh, particularly if you are acquiring larger return. You are acquiring larger return, so you should have risk. Okay? It's clear now, no? Okay. Uh, is the uncertainty <coughs> of it is uncertainty of having return this is the risk and uh, we categorize risk into systematic and unsystematic risk we will go back to this and in details the, uh, the systematic risk and unsystematic risk Okay. Oh, Hamza, remote. Will... Okay. How are you? Now, sources of risk. <coughs> we have two main sources of risk. We have systematic risk and we have unsystematic risk. Mm. So. If we have the security market line, this, this is risk, and this is return. And as you observe, as you observe, there is a positive relationship between risk and return. The more return you acquired, the higher the risk you hold. Okay? So there is, if we have a stock A, a stock B, a stock C, so stock A holding this risk and having this return, the more return you are asking, this is the more return you are asking, the higher risk you are holding. Now, this. In this chart, we will differ between the systematic risk and non-systematic risk, just to, uh, to visualize how we manage the difference between them. Mm. So this, this area is the systematic. And only this area is the unsystematic. As you observe, look at here. If you compare A and B, the systematic risk of A is equal to the systematic risk of B. But the unsystematic risk of A is not equal to the unsystematic risk of B. Because we have this unsystematic for A, and we have this for unsystematic risk of B. The, the unsystematic risk of B is higher than the unsystematic risk of A. Okay? 
So, just to conclude, the systematic risk for assets is equal or are equal. But this, the unsystematic risk is different. So, the unsystematic risk depend on the individual risk or what we call the fam based risk fam based risk fam based risk or in some literature they call this is individual risk how we can <coughs> Um, overcome, overcome the problem of the unsystematic risk. By the Let's see by the diversification. Okay, let's take this this example here. And here we have zero number of stocks. Here is the number of stocks. Here. C, for instance, is the risk. Now, if we have one single stock, we have this risk. If we add the second stock, we have this risk. If we add five stocks, we have this. If we have 20 stocks, we have this. If we have 40, we have this. If we have 80, we have this. If we have alpha, we have this. What we observe, yes, but look at this, this chart then. The risk is keep decreasing till to be fixed. So this and this area is the systematic. So we can offset the impact of individual risk by the diversification, yeah. as you observed in this chart. So it doesn't mean you, are, you put in the portfolio uh, alpha stocks means unlimited number of stocks. No. You can only get 20 stocks to uh, eliminate the impact of individual risk or unsystematic risk. Okay? Any question here? After this point, it will stay constant? Yeah, so the, uh, the role of uh, financial managers or investment portfolio managers mm -hmm. is to determine what is the, uh, the efficient portfolio or what is the optimal portfolio? The optimal portfolio, which is the portfolio, maximize the return and minimize the risk. So they, they want to locate the number of stocks in the portfolio and the correlation between the uh, stocks themselves. Okay? Any question? <clears throat> so again, the systematic risk and unsystematic risk represent the total risk. <clears throat> so the total risk is equal <coughs> the systematic risk plus unsystematic risk. We can eliminate this by diversification, but we cannot eliminate, uh, eliminate this because all securities have this risk. Okay? Yeah, it's so it's it's the markets or the, 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 the general markets. Okay? So now <coughs> unsystematic risk is diversifiable. 
it's, it means it's eliminated by the diversification. But systematic rest, we cannot eliminate this by the diversification. So it is non diversifiable Now, it is business risk. It's related to the business, related to the, to the company itself. And it's related to the financial position of the, of the company. So this is the, the unsystematic risk. But the systematic risk is related to the markets, yeah. not related to the, to the business. Mm -hmm. When I say business, business is the, the company. The systematic risk is, is related to the interest rates. Because <clears throat> if the interest rate is increased, uh, the cost of capital will increase, then uh, maybe the uh, uh, the company have less available fund to fund their activities. Uh, the reinvestment, <coughs> uh, reinvestment environment. For instance, if, if you talk about Gaza, we have problems in the in the siege and blockade. Uh, the blockade is considered as a systematic risk. Mm -hmm. We cannot eliminate the impact of this systematic risk because it's uh, it's attack uh, the all companies and all of the. Uh, the communities, <coughs> uh, the purchasing power, the purchasing power is the value of the currency. The value of the currency influence on the uh, on all of business activities. The exchange rates, the same things, <coughs> because here in, in in Gaza we are using three currencies: the uh, dollar, uh, shekel, and Jordanian dinar. So we are subject of the exchange rate of the three currencies. If you talk about Lebanon, for instance, uh, they are subject uh, around uh, three currencies. They use the uh, Syrian lira, they use Lebanese lira, they use uh, euro, and they use uh, dollar. So they are subject of four currencies. If you talk about Egypt, they are subject for two main currencies, the dollar and the Egyptian pound. Uh, <coughs> So this is the, the things. It's not only subject for your local currency, you are subject of your foreign currency because uh, it's import and export. Yeah. Okay? But we can't benefit uh, from the diversification without considering the coefficient correlation between the multiple investments. Yeah? Uh, say it again, please. We can't benefit from the diversification. We cannot or we can. We can't. We cannot, yes. Benefit from diversification without considering the coefficient Yes, this is important, yeah. But uh, uh, when I say diversification, diversification, I mean the rational diversification. So it means the efficient portfolio manager. They're considering this because it is not con conceivable to put your uh, your investment in two companies uh, uh, having similar uh, business. Yes. Yeah. But if you look when I uh, when I draw this, this is the different stocks. If you put your, your money in, this is the portfolio. If you put your money on all of these securities, you end up with this risk. Because these offset each other, so the risk is uh, diminishing. So it means uh, from uh, hypothesis or the uh, theory point of view, if you put your money in all of the financial securities, and it doesn't matter the correlation between them. They offset each other. Okay? And the, it's the, 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 the risk will be reduced because... But if you put all of the, your money in the all of securities, and it doesn't matter what is the correlation between them. But because you are not put your one dollar in all of the securities, you, you carefully selected the securities among the market securities. In this case, you should consider the importance of correlation or the importance of beta. We will go back to this uh, in uh, uh, chapter 3 or 4. Diversification and unsystematic risk, we explain this. Diversification reduces or eliminates unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk is asset specific. As, as I explained, it's a firm specific. It is a business specific. It is a financial problem. If, for instance, the, if you talk about a particular company, this company having its own individual risk. 
which is not available to other companies. So this company is suffering from this risk, other companies <coughs> suffering from other risk. This company having liquidity problems, it is not necessarily that other companies having the same problem. But if you talk about financial crisis, for instance, we consider this as systematic or unsystematic? Systematic. Systematic, systematic risk. Yeah. Because the financial crisis it attacks all companies. Okay? But things is developed to what extent the systematic risk influence on the individual companies. Uh, this is the developments in, the, in finance. For firms, unsystematic risk refers to business risk and financial risk. The business risk, when I say business risk, we talk about the business model of the, of the company. Okay? What it means business model is related, for instance, the supply chain of the company, marketing, the planning. You're talking about the, uh, the competition of, of, of the business. You talk about the, uh, the production. Um, the advertising uh, problems related to the business and the business model. I don't know if the, you have experience in the business model or not. The business model, it means determine the nine style of the business model, including the supply chain, the marketing, the, uh, the competition, the, and the other areas, even the, the suppliers. If you have risk on these things, the nine components of the, of, the, of the business model, it means you have a problems or you have a risk. Some people, they have problems in marketing. Others, they have problems in uh, supply, their, uh, uh, their, product, their, their, their raw materials. Uh, some people, they have problems in, in finance and other problems relative to your business. <coughs> So this is what I mean in the business risk. And financial risk is more specific. Because business risk is generally related to the business, to your business. Related to the production, related to the public relation, related to the marketing, uh, the technology of, of the business. Uh, and many companies, they, dis they disappear from the market because they don't have IT challenges. I mean, they, they don't develop their uh, technology. The financial risk is more specific because it's related to pure finance. Uh, the source of funds, uh, how business invests their money, uh, the cost of capital, the financial ratios of the business, you talk about the liquidity, you talk about the insolvency, you talk about the inventory, many things. You could talk about the working capital. So how company or the corporates manage their finance, how they manage their assets, how they manage their liabilities, how they manage their capital. This is related to the, to the business. To what extent the, the companies uh, adequately manage this, they reduce the business risk. Mm -hmm. But if they fail to manage the, uh, uh, the liquidity, for instance, which is very important for, for the business or the working capital, the company may, in the future, suffering from problems. Okay. Diversification does not reduce systematic risk. Yes. So in this case, is, uh, the systematic risk has no solution by using diversification. Yeah. <coughs> the efficient markets. Um, what it means efficient markets? Did you hear about this before? Did you acknowledge? Let's see the people on, on the end. Ah, okay. The priority to the end. People sitting on the end. Okay? Any question? No? No answer. Okay, now let's take. What is efficient markets? Uh, is that means the security current prices reflects all the known information. Uh, the security? Current prices. The current prices reflect? The non, uh, the non uh, information. The information. Which information you mean? You, you are right. Information related 
it to the, uh, to the assets that uh -huh. someone would love to. Okay, use. that's fine. Okay, mm. any comments? Yes. The degree of uh, efficiency depends uh, depend on, uh, on the type of the information. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. Well, both of you are right. Yes. Regarding uh, risk and return. Mm -hmm. So the, the efficient market <coughs> is related to the price, to what extent the price reflects all of the available information. Okay? So it means this price, if we say for instance Faltel, is equal $6. Our question is whether $6 reflects all of the available information of Paltel. What is the available information into Paltel? Of Paltel, it means the private information and the public information, yes. as well as the historical information. All of this information should be inbounded in the price. If this price is not reflected, the information, so this price is not efficient. This known as inefficient pricing or mispricing. So the mispricing means there is a difference between the actual performance of the business and the market price. <coughs> Financial markets, we assume that the financial markets are efficient. This is our hypothesis. But in reality, some financial markets are efficient, others are not. So it depends on to what extent the financial market reflects the information. So, <coughs> why the market is efficient? Yes, we know the, the market is efficient because of the availability of the information. The more information is available, available in, to, the, to the customers or to the investors, the more the, uh, is available. <coughs> so now, the more, the more is uh, uh, efficient. The fees of competition exist among investors. So the more fees, the more efficient. The more you relax, the inefficient. Yeah. Take this example. If the students get feed from a particular subject, you, they keep reading, they keep focusing, so they become efficient. Mm -hmm. But if they are relaxing and they don't care, so they may have some inefficiency. Yeah. So the, the case here, fees of competition exist among investors. Investors are competing on information. Okay? And because they are competing regarding information, they reflect the perception of the information into the price. So the buying and selling attitudes is reflected by the, by the information, then determine their buying and selling decisions. <coughs> so this is why, the fees of competition. The more competition we have in the financial markets, the more information inflow to the markets. This is the, the importance of competition. The, mark, the, the price is efficient. What it means that price is efficient is reflect the actual life of, of the company. But if we don't have competition, it means the, the, the company is uh, dominate the business. So in this case, the, the company uh, just uh, leading the price and the price is not reflecting the, the, the reality of the business. Okay? So the information here is important, and the, the information is the, the engine of the investor's perception. It motivates investors to buy and sell. Yeah. You observe here, we are not talking about supply and demand. In a way, that we say supply and demand is determined by information. And the people who are talking about this, they want Nobel Prize. This is the important thing. It's, it's like philosophical point of view. Because we said supply and demand. Now, what is the thing's motive? Supply and demand is the information. 
So if you have information coming to, you, to, to your mind, so you process this information and you take action. You take action, supply or demand, buying or selling. Mm -hmm. So the buying and selling itself is not the motive of the investment decision or the financial decision. It is like the, the, your mind or brain is like a black box processing the decision of buying and selling or, or supply and demand. Then the supply and demand itself, again, it is, it is not the, the, the thing. The thing is the information. Okay? You understand this yes, philosophy? Yes. Uh -huh. Please, understand this. Uh -huh. Well done. So participants may readily enter and ex exit financial markets. It's easy to get in and to get out of the financial markets with less cost. Okay? Information is really readily available. It's available to the people, to the, uh, to the investors. Uh, it doesn't matter what your investment. Uh, the amount of information is available to you is, is equal to the amount of information available to, to other investors. It doesn't matter about your uh, position. If you are in the board of director or you are in the, uh, as, as normal investors. The board of directors are not allowed to trade on this information. So, this information is meaningless for them. They cannot trade based on this. Because according to the governance, they cannot trade on this. If they do this, it means they are breaking the, the laws and regulations. Okay? So this is why the information is available to, 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 to all people equally. <clears throat> and this is the, the beauty of uh, having like the, what they say, capital markets. <coughs> okay, but the question, to what extent this capital market is available, it could be, we don't have 100%. We don't have 100%. We have some problems, we have some disadvantages, but these disadvantages compared to the other uh, financial system, it's nothing, okay? Uh, efficient market implies the investors should not expect to, co to consistently outperform the markets. What, what it means? Uh, let's take this very simple example. Very, very simple example. If you go fishing, okay, what is the possibility of having a big shark? If you are a smart man or a smart woman, what is the possibility of having big shark? 40%. What is the difference between your needle and the smart people needle? The same. And this is the, this is the, 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 the idea now. Let's take this very simple. This is the efficient markets. Let's go. This is the sea and you are edging in this place looking to your, uh, and, okay, this is the, you are holding a particular, and this is the, the fish. Okay, fish is sitting here, a small one, small one, small one, small one, small one, small one, and we have a big one here. Now, what is the possibility of having this one? And if you imagine we have other people sitting around, what is the possibility of having this? One person. Another question. What is the possibility of this guy to have this? And what is the possibility of this guy to have this? The same. It is the same. And this is, this is the idea of the, of the efficient markets. But if this guy have some particular tools to know so he can get the advantage of this. Yeah. Okay? So the, the, the things is <clears throat> the investors should not expect out or to outperform the markets. It means when you are do fishing, you are not expect to have this big shark. The big return. The big shark is the big return. If sometimes the, the financial market makes you to enjoy, 
Let's take this for instance. You are lucky and your, your mom is keeping praying for you and you go to, the, to do fishing. And in the first time, you take the big shark. Okay? Now, this big shark is off the sea. It is not available. Okay? Now, you are enjoying and telling your mom, oh yes, mom, this. Okay, go back and take another fish. You went back. What is the possibility of having a new big one? Zero. Zero. You are not lucky then. Because you may be outsmart the market one time, but you cannot do it many times. Yeah. Because the market is smarter than you. He knows you. But the first time in the first meeting, just make you to enjoy. It's like, uh, it's like, okay, you will come to the market. Okay, you can enjoy. Take this. Okay, and after that, you, the enjoyment is end. Your possibility is to have the normal fish. Hmm, be careful. Your possibility is to have the normal fish. What is the normal fish? It means the normal return. What is the possibility of having abnormal return? So it's, you have less probability of having abnormal return because the, the market is efficient. It doesn't matter what is the information that you have because the market is already reflecting all of the available information. So your private in information is worthless because the market is already having this information. Okay? And again, this is a very philosophical things. We can examine this empirically or by using econometrics. Mm. Uh, to, to examine uh, the, the, the things. So, even any smarter uh, men's or women's coming, even the, the, the intelligent people coming to do fishing, still they have same probabilities of having normal fish. Okay? Sometimes the, uh, the big fishing is coming. Again, it is the same story. What is the probability? Now let's go back to this one and this one, this one. What is the probability of this one having this new one is equal the probability of this one is equal the probability of this one and people are equal then. So the big investors and small investors are in the same vein. Yeah. But be careful, this is only available in the efficient markets. In non-efficient markets, things going not like this. For instance, the, in efficient markets, so they keep this fish in a particular place. And they ask <coughs> These uninformed people, okay, you can do fishing here. And we are doing fishing here. So the possibility of having this big fish is high. Because you know where is the, the big fish are living. But these uninformed people, they don't know where is the big fish are living. So it means they trap themselves. In this case, the informed people sitting here, Okay, they are misleading the <coughs> uninformed investors sitting here. Okay, so in other words, these people are get benefits from the stupidity of yeah. these people because these people sitting and just do fishing, fishing <coughs> the small fish. But other people they are sitting in efficient market, be careful, and do fishing for a big one. Okay, <coughs> so this is the idea and. What, this is a smaller when become it's big it's go to the to this place and they keep it in this place and this so the, it means the private information is kept by our particular people informed investors they trade based on this <coughs> and this is why they make abnormal return but this is only and only if we are uh, trading in the inefficient markets Sorry? How could be some investors uninformed? Do the capital or the market leaders hide information from others? Uh -huh. the, the majority of people are uninformed. Unfortunately to say this. The majority of investors. 
uninformed, it means, yes, uninformed because they don't have experience on how to perceive the information. Let's, this is a good, good question. Good question. And uh, this is the, the, the philosophy of efficient markets. If you have I, information. Information is coming to your brain. Okay? And the same information is coming to the other people's brains. This, the same information coming to this and coming to this. According to the recent theories in finance, and this is recent theories, I mean in 2006 and 2014 or 15, they said we don't have problems on the availability of information. The problem in the perception of the information. This is the problem. So the the information, the the private information, the public information is available to, to all people. But the idea is how you perceive this. People they don't have similar or same perceptions regarding information. So we divide them, uninformed investors, which they understand information in different ways. They don't have accurate understanding of the information. And for informed investors, they have accurate understanding. They know what is behind. I'll give you this very little example. Uh, I was lecturing in, in investment, and one of MBA students saying, uh, the dividends, about the dividends, uh, uh, to what extent the dividends uh, influence on the price. And what he said in that time, if the company decide to pay dividends, the market price will go up. Then I intervened in this. I said to him, okay, if you have information rela related to a particular company, and the company said, tomorrow we will pay dividends. So, according to your understanding, the price will go up. He said, yes. I said, this is totally wrong. Because when the company is paying dividends, the price goes down. The information is the information. You have, you know, and I know, and all people know, the company will pay the dividends. But the problem is, I understand in different ways. I understand, okay, the price will go up. So, the price will go up, it means I will buy this stock. For the people, they understand the price will go down, they will sell this. So we have different perceptions and we have different attitudes. Yeah. So this is the, the, uh, the, the idea of uh, information. So the case, you should have experience to, to, to read the, the information. And this is why the, the, the market follows a random walk. The, the price follows a random walk. Random walk, nobody knows where the price is going. Because the, the information is available, and people, they have different perceptions, and we couldn't know how people think. Because the thing is related to this. And how you know people thinking in this way? See? Random walk. The information is coming. It's information. It is materialized things. You can know this information. But how you get into the brain of this guy and the brain of this guy and know how they will buy and sell. So the price reflects the attitudes of the people. And it's complicated. And the recent models in finance, they try to, to, to understand uh, how people behave regarding the information. So the, it follows a random walk because the price itself, this price, is reflecting the pain of people. They, they take the decision. So the price is going like this, random. So now it's, it's here. What is the price? Will go up or go down or, or be straight? Okay? I know this is very simple things, but we'll try to answer your question. Any question? A lot of enjoyment in the finance. More than that. Huh? What do you think, students? Yes, so much. Huh? So much. So much enjoyment. Yeah. Well, a lot of enjoyment. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. Okay. Anyone say it's complicated? Tell me the truth, please. 
You are receiving the information now. So how you receive this information? People, they perceive this information differently. I deliver the same information to you and to you and to you. But the problem is when you go to the exams, you have different results. The question is why? Different understanding, different perception. So it is a random walk, I couldn't know. So how can I tell you if, okay, this is the things. Do you think that I'm bringing you about to, listen, the financial market is this, 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 and you listen, this is financial market. This going like this. No, the, the information is for all of the people available, but the idea in this little brain, how you process this black box. Okay? Uh, let's portfolio assessments. And uh, before going to the, uh, uh, when in the morning I read about, uh, listen please. When I, in the morning I read around uh, the information because this textbook is a new one. And uh, the, the, the last edition in 2013 and 2014, which is the recent things in finance. And I read about the information available to the, to the press. The majority of <coughs> the majority of people are using internet, and the internet disseminates inaccurate information. Uh -huh. Be careful. Inaccurate information, not because they don't know the information. No, they know the information, but they want to mislead investor, investors to a particular area. They can get the advantages of this. So don't trust internet. Don't trust internet in the basis of investments. And there is there is example in your textbook, uh, a particular company, uh, they do analysis for a particular stock. The stock was $3. And because of their analysis, it jumps to $5. And then they, uh, after that, they sell because they get benefit of this, and you get to go back to the $3. Uh -huh. A portfolio assessment. Uh, popular press places emphasize on return. This means popular press places, that's uh, right, popular media. So the question is, from where we get the right information? The, the right information is available to the, into, into the company itself. Uh, the official uh, website, the official representative of the, of the company, the, the government information is uh, trustable. So from there you can, I mean the accounting uh, reports, the financial reports, the, uh, the real data available to the, uh, we are not talking about the analyst or about the media or the press because this media saying this, uh, okay, you, if you listen to Al Jazeera, if you listen to Al Arabiya, or, or you are listening to the, to the other news, oh, these people, they are talking this, others differently, and uh, so what is the reality? The reality is the reality, okay? So higher return requires accepting more risk from the portfolio point of view. Assessment should consider both the return and the risk taking to achieve the return. When you are uh, doing investments, you should focus on both, on two things, uh, risk, risk and return. Now, oh, go back to the internet. Major source of information concerning investments. So, the majority of information is available in here. And, so the difference between me, for instance, and you, and there is no big difference. Uh, when I want to know about a particular thing, I'm not Googling. Okay, it's fine. Google is fine. But I cannot use it. Because I cannot get my information from Google because Google is available for all people. You have to need information, a trustable information, because you can deliver things in Google. And who is it preventing you? And who are you? This is the question. Who? You are investment students. Even some professors, they deliver their information. And even some non-investment students or non-professional people, they can deliver their things. To what extent we believe in this, to, to trust this. But 
The other research engines, they cannot put any rubbish things. Yeah. No. It's validates. It's under the, the investigation. They try to check your information, your data, uh, from the official people. Okay? For instance, you know in the news, just open the channels, you see, okay, this, 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 this. Before, three, three days ago, uh, uh, in the morning, just uh, switch on to hear the, the news. I don't like to, to hear the news, but I think we are living, when they talk about Gaza, I say we are living in bombing everywhere, this uh, three days ago. And, oh, rockets are firing to Israel, and okay, it's like we are living in, uh, I don't know, in uh, Afghanistan, or we are living, this is what they say in the news. Oh, uh, the, 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 the media saying, or the lady saying, uh, there is, uh, 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 see, s some Hamas things, they do uh, rockets, they try things, and they uh, uh, fire around 120 rockets. This is three days ago. So what is the hell? 120 things. So the idea is we don't trust this media. Because uh, the media is like to exaggerate things. Okay, it's one, one two, it's not, not what, 120. So I go to the official media, for instance, like uh, maybe BBC, and then I, when I read the news in BBC, one to two trial in the Friday on the, on the sea, which is sea. The, the news is here saying this, and the news in here is saying 120, but here is saying two. And this is saying 122, this place, and this two to this place. And this is misleading the, uh, the investors, misleading the, the people. So the major, major uh, sources of information concerning investment. Now the question related to the information of finance, uh, I cannot use Google, I use data stream for instance. I use Bloomberg, data stream, Bloomberg, uh, Thomson one, uh, uh, Thomson Reuters. Uh, I use, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, CompuStat, CompuStat. Uh, unfortunately, this database or this information is not available for normal people. It is not available for no normal people. The normal people have the public information. But the more appropriate or more private information is available to the other style of investors. Okay? But we can get access for this if you join the investment company. And we will talk about the importance of investment company. What is the nature of the information available in the internet? It's a free. And if it is a free, it is a free. A free of what? A free of not error. A free of rights. Or a free of, uh, let's say, no mistakes. It's a full of problems. Because it is a free. If you go to the public and services as available free, what do you think? Is high quality? No. It's definitely no. But because it is not free for the surfaces, so it is more accurate. So this is the problem of the internet. And this is why when we're asking some student to, uh, to write assignment or to write research, we ask them, be careful. Okay, it's fine, use the internet, but be careful to use the internet because not the information available in the information is accurate the majority because it is a free what it means it is a free you are you can you know you are now in the, the, the you can generate a theory and put it in the google who prevented you no. nobody you can do this and some people quoting you and saying okay miss x saying this so who is miss x Yeah, I'm, I'm keep laughing sometimes when the student delivered their assignment, saying, uh, blah, 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 saying this, who's the idiot one t talking about this? Huh? You shouldn't know who's to quote for whom. And some people, they, they said, okay, X saying X, for instance, I said, X say this. Is this right to say, I saying that X? No. no. You have to go to the, to, to the official one, to the original one, to validate your information.
and sometimes it is intentionally by a particular website to, the, to do this information or to, to publish this information. Problems of inaccuracy of information. You see? This is the problems of inaccuracy. Inaccurate information available into the, the websites. Okay? We still have time. The importance of beliefs. Be attention, please. I will finish the chapter today. Uh, the importance of beliefs. You see, when I talk about perception of information, it's beliefs. Your belief. I give you this information, but it is not. It is your problem, not my problem. I give the information equally to the students, but it is not my problem to uh, understand to, to how you understand this. I'm not whispering the students uh, my information. It's available to, to all people. So the beliefs, investment philosophy, your investment philosophy, your investment style is important. Uh, investment philosophy, to what extent you are holding risk? Some people they're holding higher risk, other people they are holding low risk, it's different. So your investment style or investment <coughs> philosophy. Do you understand yourself? This is important. Some people saying yes, but some people even say yes, but they don't know themselves. This is this is difficult things. Some people they don't understand themselves. They don't know what they want, and they don't know what they know about themselves. Okay, so this is important in the uh, understanding yourself. First things: Do you understand yourself? This is big question. Do, do you understand yourself? Yes. yes. How many people, students, understand themselves? The, most of them. Just raise your hand to see. Just only two, three, understand. <laughs> <laughs> you understand yourself? In this area, you understand yourself? Sure, I think. Okay. So if, if I tell you, uh, write your skills, can you write your skills? Yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes you have these skills, but you don't know that you have these skills. Yes, so <laughs> this is available time to make. Uh, investment decisions. Uh, the investors' resources. What are the resources available to you? It's important in the investments. Okay, uh, alhamdulillah, we finish. Yeah. Well, we can, okay. This is the, in the appendix. Any question? Uh, this is, is a revision for supply and demand. Uh, this is a revision for economics. So, it is, no, I'm not going to happen.